Hello everyone, welcome to the PG Perspective where I, producer guy Phil, break down gaming topics. And for the first one, I thought I'd talk about a good one, and that is reproduction cartridges, also known as repro cards. So there are many different reasons that people use repro cards. The three that I thought of are to play expensive games they can't normally acquire, to play games that never came out in our region, or to play games that were prototypes at one point in time and have since then now been finished. So on with the first one, to play games they can't normally acquire because of their value. So this applies to games such as Little Samson, maybe Ninja Gaiden Trilogy, Metal Storm, games that are climbing up in price. Now, here is the big reason why I myself am a supporter of these games. Because let's face it, unless you've got a huge amount of cash to just throw around at video games, trust me, I would love to be there, but I simply don't. So one of those games I was talking about is Metal Storm. This is a game that has been climbing in value on the NES. A game that looks extremely fun, but again, the price is soaring higher. I just want the experience of playing the cartridge on an NES or a Retron 5, for example, with an NES controller. What I do have a problem with is people trying to pass off reproduction cartridges as the original thing. This is a scumbag move and should be frowned upon and let's just say mercifully beaten on because that is terrible. You're ruining something. You're taking away the genuine experience of owning a cartridge like that because you decided to be a cheapo loser and make a fake reproduction cartridge. That's a scumbag move. That I have a problem with. But if you're a collector or whatever trying to play the game because you never really had the experience of playing it and you're going to pay 25 bucks for it, fine. Because in this day and age, is the company really going to get money for that game anymore? If I don't see it in the eShop, then I have no problems with it. The game's on the eShop, sure, I'll spend the six bucks and do it that way. Because maybe Nintendo obviously has to kick back something to them, that's fine. But if I have no other option, then yeah, I don't care if it says reproduction on it, that's totally fine. But the fact that it gives me a chance to play a game that I wouldn't normally get to at a cheaper price, I'm all for it. The second reason I really talked about is to play games that didn't come out in our region. A big one of this is Super Back to the Future 2 on the Super Nintendo. That game is fantastic. Now, the Super Famicom card is starting to climb in value again. Uh, I think the main reason is because the AVGN covered it again, so that's where I first saw exposure to it. Just casually looked online and I think I saw it for 50's probably climbed up, I haven't checked in a while, but there was a cool Canadian site called JC Retail, and I was able to pick up a reproduction cartridge shipped within one day, it was at my door, because it was actually not too far from me, for about 30, 40 bucks. Not bad to play a game that never came out in our region, and you know what? I think I was sick that day, and I ended up beating that game within those two days. What it does is it opens the door for all these import games to find a way to come to North America and find a way to be played in our consoles, which again, is fantastic. The third reason is unfinished prototypes that have now found their way into being reproduction cartridges. This is cool. The big one I feel was the Cheetahman one done by, what's that game's name? I'm totally blanking. I'm just gonna put it in the face over in this area, just because I can do that, because I edit. Uh, but the cool thing with that is, let's face it, the original Cheetahman game on the Action 52 cart was broken. So what did they do? He bought the rights, he ended up getting a program to fix it, now it's a totally playable game. Is it a good game? Up for discussion. But the fact that he went and did that, and now we're able to play the full game on its own cartridge, it's pretty fantastic. And then they made, I think, a prequel to Cheetahman that you can just go out, pick up, and play that. It's pretty fantastic as well. Think about that. The game that was in development never really got to see the light of day, getting to see the light of day because of this. The retro market and the retro community is one that's always growing because you think about it now, systems that maybe I played as a kid are just now starting to become more retro, say the 64, the GameCube, when five, 10 years ago, these are what? only a generation behind the 360 and PS3, but now they're slowly starting to become more retro. I'll give you an example of how it's growing. My nine-year-old brother once wanted to sit down with me and play the N64 game Pokemon Stadium. Pokemon Stadium, he, he's barely alive, he's nine years old. He didn't really know what growing up with Pokemon was like, but he wants to play it. He wants to play Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, WWF No Mercy, the best freaking wrestling game on the planet, but he wants to play these games. The community is just growing stronger and stronger. And having the ability to play these repro carts is fantastic because, again, it allows us to play games we can't afford. 
play games that didn't come out in our region and play games that were just unfinished prototypes now. It's allowing us access to even more games from our generations that we never got the chance to play. That is fantastic. I am all for that and that is my PG perspective.